poor Kenny G. We did this story before. He has a song called Going Home. It's like the theme song of China. In fact, it's almost like the national anthem of China. They play it so much everywhere. Malls, schools, train stations, fitness centers. When it's quitting time, it's like China's Yabba Dabba Doo. It's huge. And Kenny G gets not a cent. And they don't just play it once. It, it, when a bar is getting ready to close, they'll put it on a loop and play it for the last hour. Nah. You know, it's like la- it's the official last this is it song of everything. it is as it turns out the most played song in the world and kenny g gets nothing he toured in the 90s someone out there in china said let's make a copy of that like we make a copy of everything else we like you know movies dvds this is what they play for you ain't got to go home but you can't stay here yep. yeah at work, everywhere. I mean, it's like billions of people hear this every day. All right. uh, we did this story a while back when it wasn't as big as it's about to go. It's going viral. Daniel Levin of the New York Times just wrote this massive article, and it's being reprinted all over here. I don't know if it's getting to China. Ah, uh, do you think China should pay Kenny G? Just text us your answer, 52309. The Pot Report Really quickly, uh, there's a guy. Remember how to talk about federal laws, don't agree with state laws? There's a guy who was growing his own pot in Washington for his gout and knee pain, really medicinal stuff, 70 years old. They busted him in August of 2012. Now, that was before legalization, right? Well, you're supposed to be able to grow medicinally even but then. But he was doing you, it wrong, right? Well, and the feds came in. There were guns on his property. He lives in eastern Washington. Who There's guns have, on everybody's right? property. Who doesn't have yes, a few there guns? Are. There's guns in the uh, middle schools. Right. Yeah. But, but this guy was just making, his wife was making him cookies out of wow. the pot. So so he claims. So wow. he's a weird case right now because he's on Social Security, 1200 bucks a month. He's obviously not a drug dealer. They confiscated his 44 plants, his uh, 44 is a little more than he needed for his pain. His uh, 2007 Saturn, what the government wants with that, I don't know. Uh, his guns and 700 bucks in cash, and his trial is about to start, so you'll hear about him. He'll be in court today. And uh, there's a suit to try and keep the state from taxing pot. Another guy who got in trouble selling pot is... Uh they're, they're getting him for two things, selling pot and tax evasion, and his uh, lawyer says, you can't get me for both. I mean, if, if, if you say selling pot is bad, then declaring my taxes would therefore make me guilty. And now this, an amazing kicker story for today. In Seattle, during the 1980s, there were huge, huge bands that could have become as big as Van Halen. Rail, TKO, and this band, Q5, almost made the big time. And the guys from the band, some of them are really great, practically household musical names here. Uh, And guess what? They still have fans all over the world. I remember when I moved here finding out that Queensryche was like big, big, big overseas. Not as big as Kenny G. And they got paid. Uh, so uh, in the studio with us this morning is our friend Evan Sheely from uh, Base Northwest. Correct. Is, that, is yeah. that the name of it? Yes. Yeah. I want to make sure I get it right because I've never been there because I, I don't play the bass. Uh, Evan Sheely, the bassist, and lead singer Jonathan Scott K. Jonathan, hello. Hello. How are you doing? Yep. And, uh, and so here's the deal. They are so big in Sweden that they're being flown to Sweden for a huge, huge festival. And uh, if you look at their pictures, if you remember their pictures, I'm going to say you guys, tell me if, if I'm even in the ballpark, but you had costumes, I think, as good as Kiss. Better. Well, back in the day when we uh, first did this, it was when Twisted Sister and Kiss and a bunch of bands were wearing the outfits. So our manager at the time, Ken Kinnear, who also managed Hart, said, you need a gimmick. 
and uh, we were kind of against it, but we went ahead and went. Are with any his. of you guys sisters? The two of you, two of you sisters? <laughs> at all? That's not good. No, we're not going to be sisters. <laughs> Can't do that. Um, uh, and so, uh, the, I mean, I've got this iconic photo. We're going to post it today. Where do you see this? Uh, and you guys, so when you get booked to go to, and by the way, back then, Evan had hair. And had it done up in a mohawk with a, what do you call that metal piece that the mohawk sticks through? Uh, I call it a Roman helmet. A, a Roman yeah. helmet. And the helmet is roaming and leaves two-thirds, I mean, it's yeah. a, the helmet leaves most of your head bare. Yeah, and that's the first thing, when they booked us to play Sweden, they said, make sure and bring your So bring the helmet? Do we have the helmet? helmet? Bring the helmet. Ah, the helmet! And so God. all of you... Uh, all of you, uh, Jonathan, you have to be in costume. What's your which? No, we're not. Um, we're not wearing the costumes not doing that. anymore. No. Oh, you're not. Dude, no, look just me. Things. Just you just with the Evan. Roman helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because it makes it look like you still have your hair. Oh, I, yeah. I see where you're going. With that. Oh, so you don't have to all look exactly like this? No, no. Those pants bit the dust a long time ago. <laughs> we couldn't fit into those clothes, Bob, if we tried. Uh, what's know? this we? Hang on. I could probably squeeze uh, We could introduce you to our friends in Bellevue. They'd have you yeah, fit in those clothes okay. in just a few Ten days. Ten weeks. Um, uh, all right. Oh, here's the band as it evolved uh, without the costume. Still a pretty good-looking good looking band, yeah. And so uh, have you guys played much in the ensuing however many years? We've done a number of shows over in Europe. That's pretty much where we play anymore. How close did you come like, yeah, tell me how close, because I've heard this from other guys, too, in our area, and I believe it, because Kinnear was huge, <laughs> these bands were, t and some of, the, some of these things hinged on whether or not you got on a tour. Tell me what happened. Exactly what happened. I think that's going to remain somewhere in cyberspace. <laughs> we, we really don't know. So, looking back in retrospect, it's, we, we took a left, we should have taken a right, mm -hmm. we said yes, we should have said no, a couple of things like that. That's all it really boils down to. Okay, we had some good breaks yeah. and some things that didn't go right, like uh, Jonathan is saying, but we did have uh, Cliff Bernstein and Peter Mensch, uh, Q Prime, flew out from New York, and they signed Q5 and Queensryche the same day. Same day. Same day. Did they figure, oh, we already have a Q band. Let's, let's yeah, just Yeah, I think they were, in the, they were into Qs <laughs> at the, the time. Thing. They wanted Q bands, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, wow. we, yeah, we did that, and... Uh, we should have followed everything they said. We didn't. Oh, but they really? wanted you to go on a tour that you didn't do. Is that right? Is that the story? No, it had to do more with the recording process. Oh. Yeah, Did uh, they try to reshape your music into something they no, felt was... No, well, they, they were, they were kind of open. Here, it, to put it in a nutshell real quick, what happened, we didn't realize that with all the bands they worked with, which included Metallica, Def Leppard, Tesla, all these different bands, that they required their bands to write at least 40... 30 to 40 songs, and they, they would pick they would the pick. 10 or 12, yeah. and they would all be hits. So we were told to go in and start writing, writing for our third record. We went in. We, you know, at we that time... Our we, third record. And, were, were you all on drugs? Were no, you no, all strung no, out? No, no, no. We're, we're a clean band, totally. Oh, and we, this we're, is the 80s. Odd that Seattle people... I need you to snort this there, Evan. <laughs> Come on, Seattle buddy. people got strung out in the 90s. Right. I don't know what you guys were thinking. Yeah, in we the were 80s. into the music totally. Totally. We wanted okay. to play That's music. As evidenced and, by that piece on your and, head. Yeah. And what happened <laughs> is... Yeah, you like that, huh? <laughs> And that dad look was drug you know, free. You know, huh? the last time I wore this, I'm about uh, the music. Yeah, I, I wore this on uh, Halloween. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I bet that's it great. It scares the little kids really bad. Man, you got to <laughs> see a picture of this at BobRivers.com. <laughs> some epic headgear, man. So, <laughs> so they were trying, and in retrospect, what they were doing is making these bands the way we make pop stars today. They should have told us up front what they wanted. What happened is we went in. We we had a guy in the band named Floyd Rose who invented the tremolo system that you see on all the guitars. You know, Eddie Van Halen, that whole thing. So he had reshaped music history with his invention. Out of that came lots of money. Mm -hmm. So Floyd built a big house with a full-on professional recording studio in it so we just would go up there whenever we wanted and record so when we were told to write these songs we went in and made full album quality songs we did finished demos product. finished product and we sent cliff and peter 10 or 12 songs thinking okay this is it the album's going to come you out we're going to go on tour ah uh, two days later yeah. we get a telegram from them says not there yet <laughs> do some more. See, what you needed to do and, uh, is, it, I can tell you now, you already know, you needed to give them 
sort of rough stuff so they could help exactly. you finish it and then they would buy in because they were collaborating with we you. We didn't know that at the time and what you happened too much is work. when yeah. they came back with that rejection it, it the band imploded. Right, let me so hear like an, another that. recording by the yeah. way uh, as to take us out because we are out of time. Uh, see these guys folks at the Sweden Rock Festival in <laughs> Sweden. <laughs> June 6th. Or Studio 7, right? Where's yeah. Studio, Studio 7? 7, Wednesday night. Seven, oh, we're going on That's at 7.30 sharp. We're going to play that, the same. Is that closer than Sweden? Oh, a lot closer. <laughs> a <little bit. laughs> we're going to play the same 75-minute show that we're going to do in Sweden, no and, I, and I will bring the helmet. All right, here we go. Q5. Q5.